In 1975, construction of what was officially designated as Interstate 170 began between Mulberry and Franklin Streets on the city's west side. However, the original plans for an expressway through these neighborhoods began decades earlier at the heavy hand of the nefarious Robert Moses, the father of American urban renewal. Ultimately, construction of I-170 was abruptly halted in 1979 after grassroots community leaders and environmental activists organized and protested its completion. But the damage was already done. The Highway to Nowhere, a nearly mile and a half long wound ripped through the heart of Old West Baltimore, historically one of the most vibrant black communities in the United States. standing on one of the overpasses for the failed I-70 expanse, I-170 expansion, which we call the Highway to Nowhere because it is a roughly one and a half mile stretch of highway that is a, you know, eyesore and a scar through the center of Old West Baltimore. Roughly 900 to 1,000 black families working to middle class, uh, as well as the businesses, the churches, and other institutions that make up a community were disrupted by the highway to nowhere, both in Harlem Park and in Poppleton. As Harlem Park, you had the Harlem Theater. Sergeant Major Violet White lived there. You also had Dr. Camper. It's a, one of the centers of black life in Baltimore, um, in Harlem Park, which was heavily disrupted by the, the development of the highway to nowhere. First, you have to consider that Harlem Park, again, is what we would call a working to middle class. I mean, the reality of it is a black community doing segregation. So you had all, all, the, all the kinds of blacks, right? All the black people, all the black institutions. So to have a portion of the community literally disappear, right, for a municipal for federal structure that was not designed to service them, right? Wasn't designed to service Poppleton or Harlem Park that remained. It really was designed to service white people entering and exiting Baltimore City. Like it was there to serve commerce. So it is essentially the erasure of both black lives and black communities because when you displace black families, particularly elders, you shorten their lifespan. So it is an actual erasure. Life growing up on Bright Street was, was like a family. Um, everybody knew each other, uh, the kids played together, neighbors looked out for one another. So it was like a family orientation type. There was none of that shooting and stabbing, and no, we, I, I can't even remember that. But everything was, was right there that you needed to survive within that community. There's your uh, small market, then there was your larger market, there was a movie theater, uh, there was a small car dealership, you know, for the, uh, the, the matured folks, the older folks, there's your lounge. The, the children didn't know much of what was going on as far as business. All we knew that we saw construction that was taking away some of our play area, or we, it was separating and dividing us, so we really didn't know. We just knew that a highway was being built. Being older and, and living the life that I've lived and knowing the things that I know, now when I look back on it, I can see maybe some of the politics that was in this. And this was like, okay, we, we wanna create some way to increase uh, the speed of ridership from one part of town to another part of town. And in doing this, how can we do it to kind of like keep it away from 
uh, what's what I'm looking for, uh, to keep it away from, let's just say, negative proceed areas. I'm Darren Crew, Senior Operations Manager at Blue Water Baltimore. My connection to the Highway of Nowhere is planting the 477 trees to help revitalize the corridor with the Baltimore Tree Trust and the Maryland Port Administration. Blue Water Baltimore realized the Highway to Nowhere was an environmental problem for the neighborhoods. Really bad air quality coming from all these cars running. And then at the same time, we had first thought with all this pavement, you could do something to control the runoff. We looked at whether we could do a stormwater project right to our right and left or rain gardens. We weren't able to do that, and so we thought, well, what is the next best thing we can do? And so planting trees really helps reduce runoff, slow down the water, cool the neighborhoods, and improve the air quality. We needed to do environmental restoration projects. They were able to fund the project, and then we engaged volunteers to help plant 477 trees over eight-tenths of a mile. I mean, it's not a solution, right, but it helps. So the idea is someday this would be a forest, and it would be absorbing a lot of the particulate matter, the ozone, and the other air pollution that the cars are relieving, and hopefully cool the area for the neighborhood and just make it pretty. I mean, trees are driving down this thing, right? It's like a concrete jungle. It's not very welcoming. This is one of the major gateways to Baltimore. Right, right. And these neighborhoods have been cut off, and we're, we're a group that's trying to improve the environmental justice for Baltimore residents, and they got, they got their neighborhoods cut in half. The development of the highway to nowhere opened the door for a slow displacement of black people, erasure of black lives, and erasure of black history in Baltimore. 